Coloring can be found under the color correction category, and what this effect does is takes the average colors from one layer and applies it to the layer that you're applying the effect to. So I have this abstract video clip in the background and I've animated the hue so that it really changes throughout the duration of this clip, and then some plain text on top. So I'm gonna grab that color link effect and apply it to the text layer, and it's going to fill the entire comp with white just because of the way that After Effects sees vector layers like text layers. But I can say stencil original alpha and it'll bring that text back. Now the source layer is where it's going to pull the color information from, and by default it's set to the text layer itself. I wanna change that to this background clip though. So I'm gonna select that in this list, and immediately the color has changed. And if I play this back, you can see that that color is changing based on the clip in the background. And that's because our sample setting is set to average. So it's averaging the colors from this layer and generating a solid single color fill for my text layer. I could change this to any one of these options. So we could change to median, brightest, darkest, any one of these options, and it will change how it's pulling in that color information. So let's say I wanna go with brightest so that I can see that text a little bit more clearly on top of that background. But you see that the hue shift is still happening. There's also this second category that has to do with alpha channels, which my background layer doesn't have any alpha, so that doesn't really apply. But I can quickly generate some alpha if I just go into this pre-comp and I'll add a simple color key effect. It's actually an obsolete effect, but it'll get the job done. I'll turn off my hue and saturation and drag this above real quick. And let's just select maybe this bright color right here, which happens to be pure white, and increase the color tolerance a little bit. So I'm getting some of that showing through now. I'll feather it out just a little bit, and also edge thin just a little bit. So those bright whites are now transparent. I'll turn my hue and saturation back on and go back to my color link and I'll just turn off my background here. But now if I switch this from brightest to average alpha, then there's no color being applied, but it's averaging the overall alpha values of this background layer and applying that to the text. So on average, this video clip has an alpha value of one, meaning fully opaque. But if I change this from average alpha to say minimum alpha and zoom in here, then you're gonna see that this text has become semi-transparent. I'll undo and redo so you can see that it's pulling the minimum alpha value from that source layer and applying it to this text. Now I was expecting that to actually make my text completely transparent since there are completely transparent pixels within this comp. But if I just make it a little bit more drastic, maybe add a Venetian blinds effect before the hue and saturation, and then we could animate this from zero to 100%, and maybe make this width a little bit wider so it's much larger, and then jump back here. Now we'll see that text actually fade out as the minimum alpha really does become zero on that background clip. Or I could change minimum alpha to maybe average alpha, and now that fade out will happen more gradually on the text. All right, I'm going to get rid of those two effects so that we're back to a solid background, and change the sample back to brightest, and we'll look at the last two controls. We have opacity, which just dials back the opacity of this effect, and blending modes, which we can change to anything we want. So maybe I'll change this to overlay. That's gonna make my text white because my text was white to begin with, but I could change this to a different color, like maybe green. And now that blend mode is going to change the colors. This is normal and this is with overlay. Now I could make this look a little bit nicer if I add a gradient ramp before the color link and I'll just grab these colors and move them to the top and bottom and maybe swap them. And then maybe blend this with original a little bit so that we don't have such an intense shading difference on the top and bottom. And I'll actually change my text back to white so we're not getting any of that green influence. But now that color is being blended on top of the text and it just gives the text a little bit more depth. But I don't have to stop there. I could add another effect like the bevel alpha and put that before color link, make the thickness of the edge a little bit bigger and maybe turn down the lighting intensity. But now we have just a slight edge to our text and I'll change that to be lit from directly above. And then maybe I'll right click on this and go to layer styles and add an inner glow. Go into those settings and make this a little bit bigger. Maybe change the color to just be white and then turn the opacity down a bit so it's not quite so intense. But now I have something that just has a little bit more style to it while still reacting to those background colors. So this is one of those effects that does something very simple, but when you combine it with other effects and layer styles, you can create something that looks a lot more complex without a lot of effort. 
I think it's an effect that gives a good foundation to build on top of. But that's all you need to know about ColorLink. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you want to support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.